Hi, in this session we will be talking about the evolutions of RAN from legacy network to the cloud native networks. We will discuss RAN disaggregation and deployment strategies. Okay, so as display on the screen, these are categorized in four main steps. As I said, readiness is the important factor for deployment of any new concept and for the existing telcos and operator, it is very unlikely that they step directly from the legacy network to the complete cloud native networks. Hence, doing that in steps would ease the whole process. So the first stage we consider the native or existing RAN infrastructure. So we assume that every existing telco operator is at this stage. So, this is the first stage of radio access network is very specific to a single supplier. Hardware, software, interface, features, functions, everything. This type of RAN systems are highly hardware dependent. KPI's dependency on hardware is also very high. These type of RAN systems are not super efficient in terms of resource utilization because of very limited features development and automation. This traditional RAN system required more planning for good balancing of resource utilization. They are expensive, they are complex, unpredictable and maximum time over provisioned in terms of planning of sites and baseband unit deployments. Because one baseband unit is very specific to one site only. There is no concept of pulling of baseband resources at central location from where they can tune the resource requirement for individual sites. So here the stage 2 comes, which is more towards the virtualization of a RAN ecosystem. So the native RAN network can be virtualized. Note that this does not mean that this is an open RAN system. Here the concept of virtual machine comes, where the software and functions can be deployed based on the requirements. So this stage includes virtualization of legacy hardware and hypervisor driven architecture. At this stage, automations are very limited and maximum configurations are manual. Ok, now coming to stage 3. This stage is 3, one step up from the virtualization and focused more towards the cloud solutions. This stage have vision to introduce more and more automations in the functionalities and the operations. Like resource scaling up and down based on the real time requirements. This is gonna help optimizing the utilization of the resources in the better way because by adding these functions, sites are not allocated with the fixed resources. They can hire the resource in the dynamic environment and completely based on the real time requirement and that too from the central pool. And because of this flexibility, hardware capabilities will not be limited and KPIs are expected to improve. Because the sites with the heavy load who have resource crunch to serve all the users efficiently will now able to get the sufficient resources to serve their users. Hence user experience and KPIs both gonna improve. So hardware dependent KPIs are expecting to improve. Alternatively you can say at this stage the network KPIs are less hardware dependent. Do you agree with me? Anyway, so in brief, this stage which is cloud ready will have more automation possibilities, resource management would be easy, more towards software driven and API driven architectures, KPIs and qualities and user experience is no longer dependent on the hardware restrictions. This stage 3 has the ability to add more flexibility and more agility in the overall network systems. Ok, now the stage 4 which is the final target at the moment. This we call cloud native networks. This will allow containerization and orchestration and going to allow a lot of automations and self-driven decisions to configure and reconfigure the network parameters to improve the overall network performance and user experience. This stage 4 is targeted to self-discovering the network issues and optimizing them and fix them as well. That too without direct human intervention. This will allow self-scaling and adjusting the resources based on the real-time needs and all with the help of AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning. They would be able to predict the future requirements and can take on time and better decisions to overcome any real-time complications etc. Isn't super excited? Yes, I am very excited to deploy this level of intelligence system and features and functions in the network. 
and this all possible because now many and many third party application developers and product managers can work towards a specific goal and once they give the proof of concept every telco operator can use that in their network system they do not need to wait for their service provider or supplier to develop that hence the evolution in the ran network systems gonna be increased multiple folds Okay, so in brief, cloud native stays gonna add more flexibility and agility to the network systems. Systems will be able to perform better in the dynamic situations and environment. The network will be able to find network issues by self and they gonna able to even fix them as well. Auto scaling of the network will help to optimize the resources and can provide the better user experience and will improve the network KPIs as well. more and more ai and machine learning model deployment is possible which will allow not only the real time performance gain but can take better decisions for the future based on the prediction models too in the next session we will be talking about the high level architecture and structure of traditional ran and we will compare it with the open ran architecture we will also see a real life cell site and we will talk about its important components so stay tuned for the updates if you did not subscribe till now then please do subscribe to learn and grow community for regular updates if this video is informative then please like this video comment on video and don't forget to share thank you for watching